and welcome to Noble Character Crafts. My name is Amy and I am coming to you from Eastern Nebraska where I live with my husband and our five children. Today is Friday, April 23rd, 2021. This is a channel all about my crafty life and today I have knitting and crocheting to share with you all. A huge welcome to any new or returning viewers. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope that you really enjoy this episode. You can find me online on Instagram and Etsy at Noble Character Crafts, and you can get in contact with me through my email at noblecharactercrafts at yahoo.com. You will find links to the places that you can find me in the description box below, as well as the show notes for this episode. I am hosting a year-long make-along on Instagram called the Make9 2021 Mal, and that is for you to join in the Make9 Challenge. I will put a description of all of the details for this make-along in the description box below, so please feel free to look at that and join in if you haven't already. And thank you so much to everybody who has been participating so far this year. I have a few finished objects to share with you all today, and I'm so excited about this first one. I was able to finish the Vaux vest that I was making for myself. This is a beautiful pattern by Mary Jane Mucklestone, and I'm so pleased with how this turned out. I was able to use up quite a few scraps of yarn to make this vest, and I'm I was a little bit nervous from when I first started it that the colors, I was just working with a limited amount of different colors and I was a little nervous as to how they would work out together, but I'm so pleased with the color combination and how it all worked out. This was constructed from the bottom up. I will stand up in a minute so you can see it a little bit better, but it was constructed from the bottom up in the round and then the neckline and the armholes were steaked. So I continued to knit in the round even over the openings for the neckline and the armholes. And then once I completed the vest, then I went back and cut open those seams. I can insert a picture here of it, the vest before I steeked it open, before I cut it open, so that you can kind of get an idea of how it looked before it was cut open. And then after that, I seamed the shoulders together using a Kitchener stitch. And then I picked up stitches for the neckline and the armholes. And for all of the ribbing, I did modify the ribbing to be a one by one twisted ribbing instead of a regular one by one ribbing. So that was one modification that I made. I also added a little extra length to the body of the vest. It was supposed to end on at about right here in this color work repeat. And I just added a couple more inches from here to the arm hole. So about two more inches probably to the length of the garment. It was made all in DK weight yarn. And the different colors that I used were several of my own hand dyed yarns. The black for all of the trimming was my own hand dyed yarn. The little red and uh, light gray that I used in here as well as this deeper rust colored. Those were all my own hand dyed yarns. I did use this brown color that you can see in here that has some tweedy bits in it. It's a, an alpaca yarn that I used from Rollingwood Alpaca Farm. And then there were two very special hand spun yarns that I put in here. This lighter orangey, yellowy, goldish colored one that you can see at the tips of these star or rose patterns. Um, that was one, and then the other one is the more purpley and blue toned colors that you can kind of see up in here. And both of those hand spun yarns were from Slothy Creations, and I was so happy to be able to put those beautiful skeins of yarn into this project, but I have not used them, them up completely, so I'll still be able to use them a little bit more in future projects, so that's exciting as well. I used US 3 3.25 millimeter needles for the ribbing on this, and I also used US 5 3.75 millimeter needles for the, you know, the, the entirety of the body. I did have to make a modification to the armholes as well. I ended up knitting the ribbing around the armholes a total of four times. <laughs> So I did the first one per the instructions and it turned out way too big. It was like gaping and baggy. It did not fit around me nicely at all. It was just laying kind of out like this and it, you could just tell it was too big. 
So then I picked up for the second armhole edging and I tried to do some, and I picked up the recommended number of stitches again, but I tried to do some decreases on the underarm as I was knitting the ribbing. But that ended up just making the fabric underneath the armhole pucker and kind of stick out funny <laughs> underneath the armhole. I don't know, it just wasn't laying nicely at all. So I ripped that back out again. And then I decided to pick up, I made the third size in this pattern, which was for a 37 inch bust. And I decided to go down to the smallest size. I don't remember what that was for a bust circumference, but it ended up being, I think, 14 less stitches that I picked up for the armhole ribbing. So I just did that instead and that worked really well. I'm super happy with how it fits around the underarm and or around the arm now. It's not, it's laying nice and flat, so I'm super happy with that. I'll go ahead and stand up so you can see it a little bit better. So here it is. I'm so happy with how it turned out. I just think it's a really cute pattern and fit. And I, yeah, I'm just really happy with it. It's not, you know, it's got a bit of ease in it here. There's, it's not very, very tight, which is, Wonderful, that's kind of what I was going for. I'm really happy with here, where it sits at my waistline here. Usually I tend to go for more of a cropped style with the sweaters that I make, but I just thought that this, I wanted it to fit or land more around, I don't know, a little bit lower than my natural waist along my hips, I guess more so. So it's um, the same on the back basically, except a higher neck, I guess. And I'm just so happy with how it turned out. I did have to end up dyeing some more of this black colored yarn, which it was a good thing that it was my own hand dyed yarn because it was easy for me to just dye another skein of that. I just did 50 grams of that. I was only going to do 20 grams. I'm thankful I did do 50 grams because I ended up using about 30 to 35 grams to knit the ribbing. So I'm happy that I was able to do that and the color match is still great. There was no problem with that. So oh, I'm just so pleased with how it turned out. I really am so happy with that. I've never made a vest before and I, I hope that I get some use out of it. I think it's just such a fun design. I'm really, really pleased with how it turned out. It was a great learning experience because I have never constructed anything in this way from the bottom up and sticking a um, I've steeked before, but I've never steeked a neckline or armhole openings before. So that was a great learning experience. And yeah, I think that's all I have to say for it. I am just so excited about having finished this project and hopefully I'll get a little bit of use out of it. It's still a little bit cool here. So I think I'll be able to wear it a little bit before it warms up too much for me to be able to enjoy wearing it. So. Another finished object, I was able to finish my scrappy socks, which I love how they turned out. They're, they were so much fun to make. And they're, I think they're just really fun, fun uh, scrappy project. So I just gathered 18 different mini skeins or scraps of yarn. They were at least 10 grams each, but I did not use, I think I really only used I think I only used about five grams per color. So since I had 18 different colors, I used a different color for the heels, toes, cuffs, and all 15 stripes. I used, um, I did 10 row or round stripes per color. I made seven stripes for the legs and eight stripes for the feet. I cast on 64 stitches. I did a one by one ribbing. For 20 rows, I used US 1 2.25 millimeter needles, and then I just knit uh, in stockinette stitching for the entirety of the sock, for the leg and the foot anyway. I knit these cuff down. I did a heel, a slip stitch heel flap. 
I knit them two at a time as per my usual <laughs> way of knitting socks. I did add a slip stitch detail to the ball of the foot, which I have been doing recently in the socks that I've been making because I tend to wear a hole in the sole of my foot, the ball of my foot, the most quickly. So I am hoping that that will help me not to make holes in the balls of my socks. So I, I haven't had any since I've been doing that, which I think I've been doing it since last summer. So it's been about at least nine months since I've been doing that and I haven't had any holes appear yet, but usually my socks will last at least a year, if not two years typically, but I'd like them, I'd like them to last even longer. I did a rounded toe and yeah, Kitchenered the toes together and I just think they're super fun. So I'm so happy with how they turned out. They were just really addictive to work on and I, you can probably tell I just randomly chose the colors out of my project bag. I just had all 18 little balls in my project bag and I would just randomly grab a new one for each little section of the sock. So I really think they're fun how they turned out and I will probably do that again sometime because it was just so much fun to work on these. My next finished object is a cowl that I quickly made. This was a very quick project. I followed, kind of followed the pattern for the Oats Cowl by Tin Can Knits, which is a free pattern. I knit, this is the second time that I've knit this pattern. And I made the small side, the, the child size. This is made using worsted weight yarn. I used, again, my own hand dyed yarn for this project. I used to dye and sell yarn and I don't sell my hand dyed yarn anymore in case you are new to my channel and don't know the history of that. But I do still have you know a lot of my own hand dyed yarn that I use in projects. And I had, after I finished the blanket that I showed off on my last episode, I still had a few worsted weight scraps that I wanted to use up and I had these three, which came from a faded set of five skeins of yarn. I believe that this faded set was called Glory, but it, it just faded from, I think this was the darkest color and this was the lightest color. So this probably was the medium one, I'm not exactly sure, but then it had speckles of teal, red, and like a darker charcoal color. There's some of that in there. And I had kept these back for myself because I wasn't happy with how that red kind of bled into more of a pink faded color when I washed it. So that's why I had this faded set in my possession and I hadn't sold it was because I wasn't really happy with how those, uh, how this set turned out. And last year in January, I knitted five balaclavas for my children using up this faded set. And this were, these were some leftovers from that. So for the oats cowl, I, like I said, I, I knit the child size using US 8 five millimeter needles. And it starts off with a one by one ribbing. I started off with this darker color and I just knit that for about an inch, I believe, and then just went into plain stockinette. Now that's a modification from the pattern because the pattern calls for you to do half of the cowl in plain stockinette and half of it in garter stitch, but I just decided to do it all in plain stockinette. As I switched colors, I just used the Russian join method to join my yarns together. I forgot to mention that I also did that for the majority of the time with these socks as well. I used the Russian join method. I had tried using the Weave and Steven method, but I wasn't having a lot of luck with that method. I kept getting holes in the socks whenever I was joining in that way the yarn so I decided just to use the Russian join method for the socks as well when I was changing colors. A few people asked me how I manage the change for you know when my yarn colors change using the Russian join method. For the socks I just kind of um, played around with tr trial and error to see where how much yarn I use to get to the end and so on my last pass on the back side of my sock I just kind of measured how much yarn it took for me to get across that much 
And I found that if I cut about a 16 inch tail, that would save me enough um, yarn to get across the row and do the Russian join to get me approximately to the beginning of the round. I don't think I was ever perfect on the beginning of the round for the socks, but I was usually within six stitches or so. And so it doesn't bother me if it's not perfectly on the side seam when I change colors for that. On this project, it really didn't matter because, you know, I think you can see there's a change of color right here, but it just doesn't matter where, where the color changes in this because it's just worked in the round. So it doesn't matter where the change of color lands. Anyway, it just worked out that I was able to, well, I was just going to, I think the original pattern calls for you to, I, the first time I made this, I knit it to a total of seven inches before I did the ribbing at the top. This one, I just wanted to use up all three colors that I had, and it worked out that it was a pretty, you know, even amount of each of those colors. I ended up knitting this one to 10 and a half inches before I did the ribbing at the top. And I did a one by one ribbing, of course, at the top as well, and then used a one by one tubular sewn bind off that gives a really nice stretchy bind off as well. This is a child size, but it fits me and it will fit our children as well. So it is just a really, I love close fitting cowls and this one is just perfect for that. So, you know, I think it's still really comfortable on an adult and it's just nice and cozy and it'll stay, you know, really keep your neck warm. A lot of times with bigger cowls, if they fall open, then your neck doesn't really get to stay warm anyway. So I just really love how close fitting this cowl is. And since I made it a little bit longer, it's even cozier. So I'm super happy with how this turned out and I'm sure that our entire family will get a lot of use out of this. And it's always amazing to be able to use up scraps of yarn. So I'm super pleased with this project as well. Last time I recorded an episode, I showed you that I had made this headband out of scrap yarn as well. And there was a lot of, I got so many compliments on this headband. So thank you all so much. That was so kind of you. And I decided to go ahead and record a tutorial for how I made this because I did just make up the pattern. And I thought it would be kind of fun to show you all how I made this. So I'm in the process of editing that and putting that all together. So I'm thinking that I will probably post that here on YouTube within the next week or so, so that you can see how I made this headband. And the headband that I made for the tutorial is this one here. So again, I just used up a few different scraps that I had in my little scrap basket. And I came up with this color combination, which is, I, I think it's really fun. The um, different pinks and neutral colors, I think are really cute together. So this, I just made using 10 granny squares that are crocheted together using an H five millimeter hook. And I crocheted them together. I joined them as I go for that project. And of course I go through that in the tutorial, how I do that process. And then I join all of those granny squares into a loop to form the headband shape. Then I went around the edge here to pick up stitches and knit a one by one ribbing on both sides. Again, I used the one by one sewn tubular bind off that I learned how to do using a very pink knits tutorial. And I will link to that in the description box below. And I will also link to that in the tutorial video because I don't actually show how to do that bind off in the tutorial. I just refer to the very pink knits tutorial because that's how I learned how to do that bind off or you can use any stretchy bind off that you prefer. But anyway, I'm really happy with how this one turned out. It did turn out just a little bit smaller. Well, I mean, it looks like quite a bit smaller than the original one, but it fits the same. I don't really notice. I mean, maybe this one's a little bit looser on my head. I think I used a little bit thicker yarn with this one. I did use a little bit more bulky weight yarn instead of just worsted weight on this one. I did use a little bit of bulky weight in this one. This beige colored yarn is bulky weight, but the yarn that I used for the ribbing, I think is the main, the yarn that made the biggest difference because it, I think it's just a little bit of a thinner worsted weight. It's my own hand dyed yarn. And the base that I used to use for my hand dyed yarn, I think it's just a little bit thinner 
than the Knit Picks Wool of the Andes worsted weight that I used for this one. And then actually this yarn right here is a Lion Brand Tweed Stripes yarn that is a bulky weight as well. So I think that made a bit of a difference. But anyway, I'll try this new one on so you can kind of see it still is a nice, it's a wonderful fit. So I'm really, really happy with how it turned out. It's so cute and simple and it's just such a fun project to be able to use up tons of little scraps. And I love being able to combine crochet and knitting in one project. I think that's really fun. So I hope that you all will check out that tutorial and maybe try to make one of these headbands up for gifts or for family members or yourself, of course, if you would like to. I think it would be, they might make fun Christmas gifts or things like that. So, and again, always so fun to be able to use up scraps. So I'm super happy with that one as well. So those are all of my finished objects for this episode. And I only have two works in progress right now and I'm going to keep it that way until I finish them, I think. We'll see. <laughs> they are both test knits. So I really, you know, with test knits, I always really want to try to get them done as quickly as possible. The first one is being held in this beautiful bag from Trisha of Joy in the Stitches. She gifted this to me last year and I love it so much. In here is a test knit for Tara of A Loop Through A Loop. This is called Blue Christmas. And it is a sweater that is knit from the bottom up in the round. I am using Knit Picks Comfy Fingering Weight in white and honey. This is a fingering weight yarn. It is 75% Pima cotton and 25% acrylic. And I am just really loving how this is working up. Last time I recorded an episode, I just showed you one half of the ribbing that I had done, but I had to rip it out and start over because there was a change in the pattern. It is a test knit and so there are still modifications being made to the pattern as we work through it, which is completely to be expected. And anyway, I had to start the start it over from the last time that I recorded. But now I am on a roll. <laughs> I've got the ribbing for both the front and the back joined together. So the, the ribbing is knit separately because it has a split hem. I'll show you this side. And once you knit the two pieces separately, then you join in the round and start working your way up the body. And I am going to be doing, the original pattern has, I believe, four inch stripes. I think mine are gonna be just a little bit more narrow. I'm gonna do three inch stripes, I believe. I've only knit about two inches of this honey color so far. So I have another inch to go before I'll switch to the white again, and then it's just striped. I'll insert a picture here so you can get a better idea of what the pattern looks like when it's completed. And then, you know, this is Tara's version, so it's absolutely beautiful in the colors that she chose as well. I really love the side detail that she has included. So this is the side seam that has some um, twisted stitches and some purling in there. So it just gives a bit of a detail on the sides, which I think is super fun. I have decided to not cut my yarn. I'm just carrying it up the sides. So I'll find which side I'm doing that on. I've just decided to try to catch the yarn as I work up. And I think I'll just catch it about every 10 rows. I think that'll be good enough. It'll just be on the side. So I don't think that'll get in my way at all. And then I don't have to weave in nearly as many ends. So that's been working well so far. I am using, very rare for me, usually I use all Chowgu red lace needles, which are metal, but I am using wooden needles. Actually, these are bamboo. These are also Chowgu, and they are US 1 2.25 millimeter needles. And it just worked out really well with this cotton yarn for me to be able to use wooden needles instead of metal. The gauge that I'm getting on with these wooden needles is a lot tighter. I was getting too loose of a gauge with the metal needles that I had tried to do a gauge swatch with. 
This is knit at a gauge of 26 stitches to four inches. I did not uh, decide not to go to a smaller sized needle for the ribbing per the pattern, just because I couldn't get, I couldn't find needles any smaller than this in wooden. They're probably out there somewhere, but I just decided to stick with US 1 2.25 millimeter needles for both the ribbing and the body of the sweater, and I think it'll be great. I don't think that'll make a big difference. The original pattern recommends using US 1 2.25 millimeter needles for the ribbing anyway, but then her gauge is, my gauge is looser than hers when using the recommended needles for the body of the sweater. But anyway, I think it'll work out great. I can't wait to work on this more and see it grow and see the stripes come to life a little bit better. But I'm so excited about this sweater. I think it'll be a fun one to have for this spring. We'll see how quickly I get it done and maybe even summer days if it's a little bit cooler or inside where it's air conditioned. Um, it is a long sleeve pattern. I'm not sure if I'll do com full long sleeves. I might do like three quarter length ones. I haven't decided yet, but anyway, I'm very excited to have a cotton sweater, a cotton pullover. I don't have one. I've never made a cotton pullover, I believe that I can recall. I think I just have one cotton cardigan that I made a while ago. And I do use that in the summer sometimes as well. But anyway. I'm very, very excited about this project. And my last work in progress is a new cast on that I am holding in this me made project bag. In fact, I think this was the very first project bag that I ever made. Well, I made a few really pathetic bags <laughs> a long time ago, but this was the first like real project bag I ever made myself. So and I made this using a tutorial by Erica Arndt, which I will link to in the description box below if you would like to try to make your own project bag. And I picked this bag specifically because the project that's in here is very bright and colorful to match the colors in this bag. I am test knitting a new pattern by Deborah Raymond, who is the dyer behind Candy Shop Yarns and also one of the co-hosts of the Meanwhile at the Castle podcast, which I absolutely love. And I am so excited to be testing this new sock pattern for Deborah. It is called the Lucky Star Socks. And they are so fun. I am enjoying this uh, project so much so far. So they are knit top down. I am knitting the 64 stitch size. I decided to go down to US 0 2 millimeter needles for these socks after having a, a conversation with my cousin Allie. Hi Allie on Instagram. And she was mentioning that when she was uh, she was going to try out US 0 needles for her socks to get a better tighter gauge and I thought that I could probably I could probably benefit from having a bit of a tighter gauge on my socks as well. So I've decided to go down to US zeros for my socks as well. And I'm really liking how they're knitting up. So you can probably tell that it's a bit of a ribbed pattern. So I love ribbed socks. They're such wonderfully fitting socks. And the stripes on these are super fun. The original design has the stripes matching, but I asked Deborah if it would be okay if I mismatched my stripes. And she said that was perfectly fine for me to do whatever I wanted. And I am really excited about these, how these are working up so far. So the pattern calls for you to use, I think like 50 or 60 grams of a main color. The main color that I've chosen is Knit Pick Stroll in the seashell tonal colorway. And it is fingering weight, 75% fine superwash merino wool and 25% nylon. So that is here. I really love the color of this yarn and how it's working up. I actually started off these socks knitting them only one at a time. And I just really, really like making socks two at a time. I don't like making a second sock nearly as much as I like making the first sock when I make them one at a time. and. I just, it just is a lot less stressful for me to make them two at a time. That way I can just make sure that they're exactly 
matching as far as stitch count. Of course, the colors aren't matching, but still, like the amount of rows, I don't have to worry about counting the rows as carefully because if I do one thing on one sock, I'm going to do it on the other when I make them this way. It's just my preference. So anyway, I did about, I think I did 10 rows on the first sock and I thought, I need to do the other one at the same time. I just have to do it. So I put the first one on hold, started the second one, and then joined them to work two at a time. It's just my preference. So anyway, I did the color stripes differently, mainly because I'm doing them two at a time. And that way I can just pick up a mini and I don't have to split my minis into two walls. I can just pick up one mini at a time. So the pattern calls for you to use that main color and then eight at least five to 10 gram minis for the stripes. And then the super fun part of the pattern is that on one heel, there is a heart and on the other heel, there's a star that you put on using the duplicate stitch. So I'm super excited to see how those come together. I've finished the striping for the leg of the sock and then I'm just gonna knit in the main color for a little while before I do the heels. And then there's some more striping on the foot of the sock as well. So really, really excited about these. The color stripes that I'm using are, let's see if I can go through the colors I'm using. I have three, three stripes are from um, a row one yarn subscription that I got. And I believe all three of them are from Threadhead Yarns. The first one here, this lime color, is called Owen's Glowworm. The second one, the gray, is called Etched. Those are both from Threadhead Knits. And then this bright corally color, I don't know the name of that. I lost the label on that one, unfortunately, but I'm pretty sure it's also from Threadhead Knits. The uh, pinky purple color right here is my own hand dyed yarn, as well as this navy blue. This lighter purple color is from Maker's Haven and that's called Nobody Knows. And this bright lime green is a mini that I got from a homespun house and I'm not sure of the name on that one either. Oh, and then this turquoise is from, um, from some of the gifts that Joy had sent over. I don't know if you caught that episode. I can't remember what episode that was, but one of the viewers of the uh, podcast sent over a huge box of gifts for the for me and for me to give away on this podcast to winners of the um, Make 9 2021 now. And I decided to keep a set, a mini set of yarn from Sweet Fiber. And this bright blue turquoise color was in that set. And it's called Something Blue. So anyway, they're all fingering weight. They're all either 75-25 or 80-20 blends of merino and nylon, I believe. So I'm super excited about these as well. As you can see, there's quite a few little ends of yarn. I just decided to not join them in any way at this point, And I'm just going to go back when I'm all done and weave in those ends, which won't be too terrible. I do have... I did make a mistake when I was doing the first color stripe and I misread the pattern and I did one less row than what I was supposed to with that color stripe. So I have two more extra ends <laughs> of that blue and that lime green that I'll need to weave in. But what's two more when you've already got quite a few? I don't think that'll be too much trouble to weave in those ends. And it's just easier not to have to worry about it, I think. And I wanted to follow the pattern exactly. And she recommends just cutting the yarn and weaving it in at the end. So anyway, that's what I'm doing. I'm super excited about that pattern. So excited to see those come together. And I think, like I said, I'm just going to focus on those two projects until they're done before I start any new projects. We'll see if I stick to that. <laughs> Thank you so much to everybody who shopped my last project bag update in my Etsy shop. I truly, truly appreciate the support that you all have shown me through my Etsy shop. I am enjoying making project bags so much and I'm continuing to work on them for my next shop update. I just wanted to give you a little preview of what will be going into the shop for my next update as per usual. I don't know when that shop update will be at this time. I will try to let you know as it gets closer, but I'm just trying, I like to have a little bit of variety before I update my shop. I like to make at least three different 
uh, fabrics, you know, three different fabric selections of bags to put in my shop. And I'm trying to make quite a few of each of those fabrics to have a, you know, a significant shop update. So I'm not sure it will be probably at least a couple more weeks before I am ready for that shop update to go live. Um, as I've said before, please follow me on Instagram or keep an eye on my Etsy shop. And I always post on Instagram when I update my Etsy shop. You can also, if you don't use Instagram, you can contact me through my email at noblecharactercrafts at yahoo.com or through Etsy. And just let me know if you would like me to send you an email notification of when my shop is updated. I would be more than happy to send out an email to you to let you know when my shop is updated, if you would prefer that way. So let me know, get in contact with me, and I will add you to a list of people that I am emailing to let them know when I update my shop. So the last time I had a shop update, I had two fabrics that I'm going to be, well, I had three fabrics, but two of those fabrics, I'm going to be adding more project bags per the request of you all. So thank you for requesting those. I um, showed you last time that I have now started making small bags and larger bags from my original size. So now I have three sizes of project bags. I'm going to work on making all three sizes in the black floral fabric that I showed you last time and the purple floral fabric. This one has a denim contrasting fabric and this one has a black solid contrasting fabric for the bottom. So those are the two fabrics. As you can see, I don't have any made up yet, but I'm going to be working on making some of those up. And then the new fabric that I have for a project bag is this fun handkerchief, red handkerchief style fabric that I'm just so excited about. I love how this one came out, and especially with the combination of the denim paired with it. I think it's just such a fun combination. I haven't mentioned before, but I just am ex a little bit excited about the detail of adding in this this colored thread on the denim to kind of emulate what denim stitching usually looks like on jeans. You know, it usually has this light brownish colored thread. And so I've added that to the stitching here on the denim, which I just think is kind of a fun detail. And this is the medium sized bag. So I, as I said, I do have smaller bags and larger bags as well. The inside contrasting fabric is this fun red gingham and all of my bags come with an interior pocket and they also come with this clasp that has six closed stitch markers. And I decided to put brass on this one because of the, you know, the button on jeans and the zipper on jeans is usually a brass color. So <laughs> I don't know why those little details make me super excited, but they do. They all have a boxed bottom and are drawstring. So this is just a preview of what will be going into the shop. I'm working as quickly as I can to try to make these up. But of course, I do have five children and I homeschool them. So I don't have a ton of time every day to work on them, but I try to work on them a little bit every day. And hopefully it won't be too long before I can update my shop again. So that's all I have to share with you all today. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope that you really enjoyed this episode. If you did, please feel free to give me a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel if you haven't yet. I would appreciate that so much. I hope you all are doing well. Take care. Bye-bye.